Good morning, everybody. It's Lynn, the Leather Bag Lady. How are you all today? It's uh, Tuesday today, and um, not sure what it's like outside. I have not been outside yet. Leather Bag Lady weather report, but the temperatures are getting a little uh, warmer. Uh, by that, I mean minus 2, not minus 22. Uh, but there's still a lot of snow. I just was uh, putting the kettle on. And I thought, you know, there's been snow on the ground for almost a month. And to be honest, I can't remember the last time that was the case. We do get snow and then, you know, within a week or so or two or a day or two, it's gone. But it's uh, it really is hanging around. And I'm not sure that we're supposed to get any more. Maybe like one to three centimeters, something like that. But anyway... Leather Bag Lady Weather Report from Ontario, Canada. That is our weather today. So, today's bag may be a little out of season, uh, but I love it. Now, I got this bag. If you watch my videos, you may have heard me talk about a little thrift store that I went to, uh, not last week, the week before, on my way back from Welland when I was staying in the falls, and I found a Roots bag for $35. Now, this thrift store is like supposed to be one of the last real thrift stores where picture frames are a quarter and glasses are a quarter. Well, Roots bags are not a quarter. They That was $35. And actually, before I forget, one of my regular customers, Cynthia, who lives in the States, has actually asked if I could um, share with her what I know about Roots because she has kind of fallen in love with the brand and um, you do need to be educated because there's a couple of rules where Roots is concerned. Um, there are, I think there's one documentary on YouTube about Roots. Uh, might be worth searching it out. Won't necessarily give you any specific bag information, but it will give you a background into the company and the fact that the company was actually um, founded by two Americans, albeit that they set up shop here in uh, Ontario, Canada. So, Cynthia, I will uh, do that for you, but I'm going to need a, a little bit of time to prepare because I want to make sure I'm giving you correct information and I want to make sure I'm covering as many bases as I can cover with what I have and what I know. So that will be coming up. But today's bag, it's a little summery, as I was just saying. But I don't know. Whatever opportunity I get to be a little bit summery, why not? And this is the bag. Isn't it awesome? It's a really cool seafoam green color. Now... This color on anybody's walls, can't stand it. It's institutional. I just, I hate it. But on a piece of leather, it's cool as all get out. It's a shoulder bag for sure. You could go, well, actually, this is more, this is way more comfortable than I thought it would be. So yeah, crossbody as well. Hmm. I just presumed it wouldn't work. But it's so cute. This little brass tone um, decorative piece is secured just by some more strips of leather. Here's all this beautiful raw leather on the back side of the color. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Now, does have a couple of issues and not anything that is going to scream or jump out at you. Back here, you're not going to be able to see this on the camera because it is ever so slight. There is a tiny little bit of, um, of, yeah, it's not even showing up. But you know me, I want to tell you everything rather than you be um, unhappy when you get the bag. There is just a very slight yellow um change of color it's just some color transfer um that's one of the issues and one of the bigger issues is there has been some bleed through of the glue and it's happened in a few spots i've been able to get rid of most of it 
but um, it is on the underside of the flap, so it's not visible, but it is there. And I, and I do need you to know. But that opens up to a compartment. Then you've got your inside of the bag with a zipper compartment. There's no designer brand, no manufacturer label, nothing. It is just the cutest, cutest little bag. A little bit more glue transfer where they've connected the two sides of the strap. I actually didn't see that. I'll be able to get that off. I am becoming quite the magician when it comes to refurbishing these bags. So that is today's bag. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So there we go. Um, what am I doing today? I'm actually going to uh, back to the falls today. One of my good friends has had a uh, shift canceled. So we're going to go on a little bit of a road trip to the falls. You don't need to twist my arm to go to the falls. You just don't. So we're going to do that. We'll go thrifting. It's seniors day. So I think 50 plus or 55. I'm almost there. Um, I'm a senior. As far as they're concerned, I'm a senior. So there we go. All right. We're going to finish up Burberry today. I'm kind of sick of Burberry. I don't know about you guys, but too much Burberry. So we'll finish it up and then we'll move on to something else tomorrow. So the last little pieces of uh, facts for Burberry are as follows. Um, just going back to World War II, there, the Burberry belts used to have D-rings on them. And in World War II, they were used to hang grenade to hang hand grenades. There you go. So that kind of, I don't know, that should have been up with the World War II section, but it wasn't. So there we go. Um, it takes four hours to make one trench coat. And there are 80 pieces involved. There's eight pieces just for the collar. That's why Burberry's the big money. I guess, you know, when you don't, when you don't live in the in the world of luxury, um, you just don't, maybe not don't appreciate the right word, but you don't consider the processes that are taken to make that piece of whatever it is, leather, fabric, whatever, um, stand out from the rest. And it's almost like, you know, when you're getting ready to decorate a room and three quarters of the work is the prep. Nobody sees that. They just see the end result. And I'm sure that's very similar for brands like this, where, you know, like even Hermes, they may hand make their bags. Like I'm sure it's very similar across the board. And lastly, um, Christopher Bailey, who um, now this is some years ago, so this might not be uh, as up to date as as I think it is. But Christopher Bailey, the CEO, founded the Burberry Foundation in 2008. And that was to help sponsor young designers so that they could create the next Burberry for generations to come. So there we go. That's Burberry finished. Good riddance, Burberry. That was a lot of information about Burberry. Uh, not one of my brands that I kind of get all hot and bothered about, but it was interesting. I really like the um, I really like the uh, World War II, World War One uh, stuff. I just you know, it's hard enough for a business to make it one year in business, but to go all the way back to World War One, and for a business that old to handle the um, changes that the world has put it through over all those years. I mean, World War I was Downton Abbey when it was still, um, even before that, when it was still horse and cart and servants and all that kind of stuff. So hard to, hard to imagine the uh, changes in, in the world, in technology, in industry, social media. I mean, it really is uh, quite a feat for a brand to have uh, stood up to all those uh, changes in history, changes in uh, what we do daily in order to get what we need to get to look fabulous. So there you are. 
Hope you're all going to have a great rest of the day. Hopefully I found I find some good stuff. You never know. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.